All right, we are in our new studio space. What do you guys think? Let me know if you guys want a studio tour video in the future, but come here for a sec. Do you have a watch that you like to wear, but you still kind of think about selling it once in a while? See, that's been my relationship with the Hamilton Murph. That's until recently I stumbled across an amazing bracelet for it made by Uncle Straps and it just changed the game. So let's talk about that, some other cool bracelet options for this watch. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to update your Black Bay 58 as well. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. So I actually got wind of this Uncle Seiko bracelet for the Murph from a post on Watch Crunch. So if you wanna get the latest happenings and leaks from the watch world, make sure you're on the Crunch app. So I think we can all agree that at this point, the Murph is a great watch. It went toe to toe against the Alpinist in my review about a year ago and really held its own. After wearing it on and off for the past year and taking it on a road trip to Los Angeles, I only have a couple of complaints. First of all, no screw down crown, making me a little nervous jumping in the ocean with it. And then the crystal with pretty minimal AR reflects absolutely everything. But the biggest forte of the Murph, in my opinion, is its case proportions. 38 by 11 with a gently domed crystal, meaning it wears like a dream. The dial has beautiful Arabic numerals with open sixes and nines, a real nod to watches from the War Wars. And the elegant cathedral hands ends with elongated tips. Now you might say that the drab coloration of the dial is a negative, but I learned that these field watches purposely didn't overdo it on the loom as not to draw too much attention, making soldiers targets for enemy snipers. The whole interstellar connection, that's just cherry on top. The Murph ships on a great strap, actually. It's a glossy dark brown slash black leather with a crocodile embossed pattern. I mean, I'm pretty certain that at this price, you're not getting real croc, but the strap actually feels hardy, well-made with a contrasting light khaki stitching around its perimeter for that old school aesthetic. It's all topped off with a solid milled Hamilton sign buckle. But for me, if I really like a watch, I always wonder how it would look on a metal bracelet. Bracelets can transform a watch's appearance by extending the visual boundaries of the case and fitted in links really help to clean up that lug area. A new bracelet can make you feel like you're wearing a different watch. Unfortunately, this wasn't an option on the Murph from the factory until now. Enter Uncle Seiko. Larry started making Seiko bracelets years ago, but his small enthusiast operation has really grown and he's rebranded now as just unclestraps.com. I mean, it's a little strange to have your clasp say uncle, but I'm sure there's a dad joke in there somewhere, but I do love the stylized fonts that he used to stay consistent with Hamilton's topography. The bracelet itself is your standard oyster or what he calls a senator, probably because of copyright reasons. There's also a Jubilee version and they're finished really well, well enough that your mind doesn't really separate the watch from the band as coming from different places. And it just feels like this is what should have shipped OEM to begin with. The brushing is clean, it doesn't flex or rattle and the in-link fitment is tight between the lugs. The bracelet is just under four millimeters thin, which matches the thinness of this watch case perfectly. It also has that classic Rolex taper from 20 to 16. There are three micro adjustment holes to let you get a perfect fit and plenty of extra links to accommodate a variety of wrist sizes. To give this watch a great bracelet option now, it deserves, really completes it as a package. But let's take it a step further. I've also enjoyed the Murph on this mesh bracelet. This one I took off the Hamilton Intramatic Chrono, so it actually does have a Hamilton signed clasp as well, but I'm sure you can order it at your AD or find a number of aftermarket mesh options. This thin mesh bracelet didn't work on the Chrono because that watch is like 14 and a half millimeters thick and the way it sat between those tall squared off lugs was just all wrong. But on the Murph, it's another story. The three millimeter thickness of the mesh complements the thinness of the case. The mesh drapes smoothly around your wrist. It just feels more delicate, more jewelry-like. It takes the watch off the battlefield and lands it smack dab in the middle of a dinner party. It's just a demonstration of how versatile this watch can be. Okay, I was gonna finish talking about the Murph and go on to the Black Bay at this point, but something felt like it was missing. I mean, if we're gonna harp on how the Murph can be a nice one watch collection if you just give it a box of different bands, well, it only makes sense to also try it on a NATO because field watch, 
NATO strap just fitting. So let's throw it on this burgundy zero pass strap because it would be a shame after all this praise of thinness to ruin it with layers of leather under the case. There, that looks proper military issue. The zero pass strap allows you to get that NATO look without the NATO bulk. So as I was scrolling through the Uncle Straps website, I was surprised by how many custom fitments he makes for different types of watches from different brands, like the new Tag Heuer Carrera, great watch, no bracelet option. The other frequent complaint that we have is the Black Bay 58 with those faux rivets. This is my buddy's BB-58. He's had this watch for a few years and he works with his hands and his daily beater. So it's kind of scratched to hell. Let's try and swap out the old tire bracelet to get rid of those rivets. Now, Uncle offers a custom clasp as well, but I actually prefer to keep the Tudor one because it's really nice with the ceramic ball bearings. Luckily, it is a direct swap to the new bracelet, but we have to do something about this finishing. So I decided to try to refinish the clasp myself because I stayed at a Motel 6 last night. So I first started with some 600 grit sandpaper just to get most of the deep scratches out. And then I switched over to, I think a thousand and eventually 1500 grit. And you just wanna work your way up and do a thorough job so that the deep scratches are all gone. And then switching over to a Cape Cod cloth, this will take away the fine swirls and get the surface to a pretty good shine. So once it looks like that, you're ready to put some new brushing back into the clasp. So you tape off the parts you don't want to be brushed and in straight, stroking motion you would do that a few times and hopefully it ends up like this i'm pretty happy with the result there. voila now you can stop complaining about those rivets i'll leave a link for everything used in this process in the description and here is the black bay 58 all put back together with the uncle bracelet tied to its original refinished class by yours truly i think i did a pretty decent job for a first try what do you think look Sometimes I fall out of love with the watch, not because of the watch, but because of the band. And to be able to separate that in your mind and give it a new bracelet or strap can completely change its look. And it's sure cheaper than buying a whole new watch. All right, y'all, I just hit my mic. So that's gonna be loud. Okay, that's all from us this time. We're gonna get silly in the new studio. Catch you next week.